You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? This is Mike from the Moose on the Loose. I hope you are doing well today, especially because I don't have really good news. Um, yesterday, I told you that I would review Alimentation Couchetard earnings, uh, latest earnings that were reported yesterday after market closed. And I expect the uh, market to not like those results. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock price going down today. So maybe if you're looking for an entry point that could be your cue again not financial advice here you have to do your due diligence and definitely Kushtard is slowing down this year um, second quarter in a row where earnings per share are declining and and yeah so that was um, that wasn't impressive so let's get it started with the numbers and then we're gonna do a little bit more digging onto what really happened this quarter so revenue 17.6 billion which is pretty cool, um, up 8%. So that was like the good news. And we're going to explain what happened in the revenue later on today. Um, and earnings, uh, adjusted earnings of 48 cents a share, down 32 percent So definitely not going to scream victory here. Uh, not that great. Uh, the uh, gap number, the daily uh, earnings per share were 47 cents, down 31%. So the adjustment didn't do anything here. It's really um, pretty much a bad quarter in terms of earnings. So we're going to start with um, with that because this is definitely the most important part, right? If you're not making money, well, then there's not much to do, right? Um, so the um, there was a lot of expenses. There was a lot of amortization that didn't, that didn't, that didn't help. Uh, there's also the fact that this year, there's one, uh, this quarter, there's one week less than last year. So of course, it affected earnings a little bit more and also we had um, lower road transportation fuel gross margin in the US so the the fuel business is is great for volume it's usually positive for for Kushtard but from once in a while when the margins are not there well obviously it impacts their earnings there was also more than 100 million in amortization which is not real money that you're losing which is great this is also often the case what when it, uh, it it's also happening when a business makes acquisition and and you can like see the segue here the revenue grew through those acquisitions so when a business is making major acquisitions it will also record some um some amortization on their balance sheet which will lower the earnings so that explains the poor performance on the earnings so Weaker margins, one week less in the quarter, and of course, amortization. That The latest part, I'm not that uh, worried because it's just like accounting stuff, which makes only sense. It's all right. Um, then when we look at the revenue, this is also not so great news because yes, we have total revenue that are up by 8%. But what I really like to see is the um, same store sales uh, because when you add stores, when you make acquisition, it's great for the short term because then you see a short term boost in er in, in revenue. But for the long run, you still need to find ways to grow organically. So same store sales means that if they look at their, I don't know, like their 14,000 stores today and their 14,000 stores, the same stores last year, and then they made the comparison. So overall, uh, merchandise and service revenue were down 1.7%, and same so store sales were down point by 0.5% in the US, by 2% in Europe, and by 3.4% in Canada. Of course, there's like a lot more stores in the US, so that's why the total um, revenue were not down that much, but still, we're not growing. Uh, CEO explains uh, pretty much did a copy paste of last uh, quarter's comment about um, the uh, consumers being tight with their budget, not spending less money, like economic headwinds. I, I get that as well. That totally makes sense. But again, you need to find ways to find to, to, to generate growth, even in a tough market. We have seen other type of businesses being able to do that. Uh, not too long ago, I got a question about um, KC General Stores, which... 
is not exactly the same thing as Gustard, but they do operate gas station and they have like those kind of like convenience stores and they actually are on a roll. They're a lot smaller as well, mind you. They're based in the US. The ticker is C-A-S-Y if you want to look them up. But just to compare, like sometimes when you look at like companies in the same industry to see, well, if this like is a major trend or if like other companies find ways to generate more growth. Well, Casey was able to generate more growth while Alimentation Costar is definitely struggling to um, improve their uh, organic sales. So the revenue growth literally come from acquisitions, from wholesale business, uh, fuel business, so selling more fuel, even though the margin were not that great, and uh, new store openings. So long story short, those are, I would call that like short-term solutions for a larger problem. Um, and 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 then there was, this was not a good quarter. I don't expect the stock price to perform well today because they reported after uh, the market closed yesterday. So probably a 3, 4, maybe a 5% drop. Um, they were back on the uptrend trying to recover their way through $80 a share. So chances are it's going to finish around like $76, $75 maybe. I'm just like Talking really short term here, but don't expect don't expect the stock price to, to, to thrive today, that's for sure. Now, let's take a deep breath because I know I know that a lot of media is going to come out and say that Kushtar is dead, that they've been reporting poor earnings, and it's like the overall year has not been great for, for ATD, which is totally true. They have been struggling to generate better earnings, better uh, revenue, but... That is only normal. Uh, it will be concerning if they pull out another four quarters in a row, another bad year coming up. Um, then it would be a disaster, and it not a disaster, but it would be like a proof that Kushdart is literally slowing down for one year. Because, like, keep in mind, I know it's kind of weird. We're in the middle of, like, we're in the beginning of summer in June, middle of the the year, but they do report their last quarter for their fiscal year. So the Total, um, the, the, the end up results for the year weren't that great. They ended the year with total revenue being down by almost 4% and adjusted EPS down by 10%. So definitely not the growth that we are expecting from Kushtard uh, in, in general, but it was a big year of transition because they made a, a major acquisition for um total energy um, stations and and moving forward management is already taking action so first they expect to generate synergies from their latest acquisition so they just bought 2200 stores from total energies for 3.1 billion euros uh, they expect to generate synergies from that they are already focusing on um, slowing down their expenses. So they um, initiated a cost initiative. So they already decreased their expenses by like 1%. And they focus on their uh, loyalty uh, program in uh, the U.S. to improve the relationship with their customers, um, increase the bond, and of course, trying to attract them a little bit more often in their stores with more bonuses and, and more loyalty rewards. So what I see here is more like a small setback. It happens for a lot of businesses. Um, it just happened actually for their revenue between 2019 and 2020. They had about like five or six quarters before the pandemic where revenue were not growing. Earnings were okay, but literally the, the revenue were like stagnating. So I don't... I'm not that worried right now. Um, of course, it is a situation where I'm going to follow a little bit more closely going forward, but let's not just get crazy about like a bad year and the late, mostly the two latest quarters being negative. Um, overall, this business is still a remarkable operator, uh, growth by acquisition. They, gen they have several um, plans to generate organic growth as well. So the investment thesis remains. I always like to say, well, I look at the investment thesis and then I look at the metrics to make sure it's backed up. So right now there's a slowdown. It is important to note it. And, and I'm not going to say, hey, that's the most amazing stock in the world. Well, definitely bad quarter, bad year. That's all right. Now we're going to lo look at the next year, the next four quarters, how they integrate total energies, how they generate synergies. And in the meantime, they're still buying back shares. They're still increasing their dividend. They're still in 
a very solid financial health position. So for all of those reasons, my thesis has not changed. My regards to Alimentation Costar has not changed as well. But I mean, I don't have any reasons to cheer for today. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. And tomorrow we're going to come back with another episode. In the meantime, don't forget to stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to this podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.